There's been a couple of examples in the last few days where I've seen stuff and just thought, well, that's not quite right, is it? And, and this is related to nonsense. So it's people posting on, say, Instagram or whatever. And one of them is a guy with a dog and the dog is like got a really, really waggly tail <laughs> and it bounces on its back feet like when it's really, really happy. I think it might be called Nala, but I don't know. And on the guy's post that he's had to put up, he's put to those people saying that I'm making my dog do this. She does it anyway. And then he's doing a little video to show that when his dog is happy, she's like oh, 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 having a lovely time. So some mean, miserable bastard has gone on to this glorious feed of this lovely man with this lovely dog that is like super happy, living its best life. It's going for the best walks. It's having the nicest time ever. But someone has still managed to find something unkind to put there for him to be responding in that way. And the same thing with another guy who happened to be a builder. So obviously it caught my eye because you will know I have a thing for strong men who can actually do stuff, plumb, scaffold. I mean, don't even get me going. It's beyond exciting for me in every regard. It's just, you know, tell me that you're a joiner. <laughs> and my life's pretty much complete. I, like I say, I, I could go on. I, I got asked to move on in Italy actually recently because I was stood in the street just watching scaffolders. <laughs> But the point is, this lovely man was like, I'm going to show you how I, I think he was doing underfloor heating, something beyond my wildest capabilities. I watch someone do it and I'm just like, like it's four tonne of this and I've just got delivered 20 tonnes of this. Watch me, watch me in my workman's trousers with those extra pockets. <sighs> no, I mean, watch me lay this stuff and then some of this stuff and then I buy this and I make this and eventually what he builds is this warm floor that his family will love. You see, it's just got every element of things I love. I've, I've really gone off the subject, but the point is he put somewhere in his post or his comments or wherever he put it, somewhere obvious for me to have seen it, to people saying, well, I don't include the cost of my tools in this. Well, no, I don't. I was like, geez, someone's watching this guy do a lovely thing. Like, what an amazing ability to go, yeah, I can lay flooring. Yeah, I can make my family a warm home. Yeah, I'm capable. I'm able. And But not saying it like that at all. That's just my take on it. He's just going, let me show you how to lay a floor. And then someone has been mean and said, yeah, but you're not including the cost of tools. And I just wanted to say... If you're finding this in your life, because many of you will have exactly this experience where maybe you're doing something well, but someone has to be a bit snark or you've posted something that you thought was really kind of sweet and someone's been a bit mean or snarky or pointed out something horrid. And it, obviously it's something I've experienced all my life, being the most hated woman in Britain or on the planet or the biggest bitch or whatever is that the unkindness is there and you can really, really feel damaged by it. Especially if you're someone who's got a lovely dog who's like, I'm living my best life, this is my best life, and people can still be mean. I mean, God, I deserve a lot of stuff because my gob is annoying, I'm quite annoying, I say things that people find offensive. So in a way you understand it when it's me, but if it's a dog or a guy laying a floor, I mean, please. So my point, I guess, is if this is you, and you're getting this unkindness, is do remember that it isn't about you or your dog or your building work, or this is all to do with a person. And this person, for them to write some snarky thing or send you a mean email or be ungracious to you on the WhatsApp group, they have to be so unhappy with their life that your happiness the only way they can seek to moderate themselves is to attack your happiness, to be unkind about your happiness, to try and detract from your happiness as a way of making themselves feel better about whatever mess they've got themselves into. And that's something you hear quite a bit, that that's an unhappy person trying to detract from your happiness. But much more importantly than just that point is imagine the effort and the energy that goes into being that negative, that unkind, 
that sm snarky. Imagine if you're walking around, you know, with all the Velcro stuff that I think you give off, like I give off, like, oh, well done, good one, nice one. I'd clap out the window of my car at people who are running. I mean, they probably don't enjoy that, but I'm like, go on. Imagine how, how overflowing with bitterness you have to be to have spare to just throw at people who are doing lovely things. And then you see like, that, that this person being unkind is just a vortex of horrible stuff. Because once they finish snarking at you, it doesn't mean they go on and be nice to someone else. They'll do it to someone else. And you really have to say to yourself, how much am I going to allow this person who is clearly a vortex of bitterness? How much am I going to allow them to take from me? And it's fine to acknowledge it's upsetting. It's fine to tell people and explain why you're hurt. But really, when it comes down to it, and you know I love me a bit of discipline, it is self-discipline. It is the self-discipline to at some point say, right, I am not going to allocate any more of my energy to that person who is clearly struggling with life to the point they're reaching out for help in the wrong way, right? I'm going to look after my energy. I'm going to conserve and protect my energy so that I can use it for better things. Those better things might just be having a wee, having a shower, having a quick tidy around, brushing your hair. It doesn't have to be something marvellous, but conserve, preserve your energy. Don't give it to those people. And I would also suggest to the lovely guy with the dog or to the builder laying the floor or whatever you're doing, you don't really have to answer those people or those critics because really they don't deserve you to answer them. If someone can look at your dog wagging its little tail and stomping its little feet and be unkind, the sort of issues they've got will never be answered by rational conversation. And if you are one of those people who maybe you're going to go onto these comments and leave something, ask me if I'm trans or tell me that I look like a melted wheelie bin or any of the things I, I typically get. Um, you know, I'd say to you, it is way easier to be positive and happy and say the odd kind thing or nothing than it is to post something snarky when someone's just trying to show something lovely. And if you really can't cheer up, you know, there's always a place for you in our audiences and you'll see the laughter really is a great way to get through the day. The madness that we're surrounded by, I truly believe, is why I do what I do now, the only way we make it through this is by laughing either at me, with me or at the madness. So I just wanted to post that there as a way of making right what is a bunch of snark by unkind people piled onto people who absolutely don't deserve it at all. And if you still feel the need to be mean or a bastard or say unkind shit, well, come on, say it to me, because my shoulders are quite broad enough to take the sort of trivial crap that you want to post. <laughs>